Welcome once again to ExplainingComputers.com and to my third video about spreadsheet skills. This time we're going to turn our attention to logic functions and in particular to the use of the IF statement. Right, here we are back in a spreadsheet and as usual in these tutorials I'm in the freely downloadable OpenOffice Calc but you can do what I'm doing here with logic functions in any spreadsheet including Excel, Google Sheets, LibreOffice, etc. So, what we're going to do initially is to show you how to use a simple IF statement. And to show that, I've set up a small spreadsheet with some candidates' names who've all taken an exam, the mark they've obtained, and I've put some information over here to remind us what should happen, which is where people get less than 40 in this test, they should fail. If they get 40 or more, they should pass. And we're going to use the spreadsheet to work out whether people have passed or failed. So to do that, I'm going to go to cell D6. I'm going to type equal if to open up an if statement and open up a bracket. And then I have to tell the spreadsheet what the condition is that we're going to look at, something that can be true or false, and then what happens if something is true and what happens if it's false. So here I'm going to say if C6, I'll click on C6, is less than 40, that's our condition. I'll then enter a semicolon. I'll then enter a text label to say we want to display fail if they've got less than 40, another semicolon, and then another text label for pass, and then we close the bracket. Now I should just point out that the format of the if, where you have if, condition, true, and false, is the same in any spreadsheet. But the syntax is very slightly different, to the extent that if you're in OpenOffice or LibreOffice, you put a semicolon between the different parts of the conditions, if you're in Excel or Google Sheet, you put a comma between the different parts of the conditions. Yes, that's very annoying to remember. It happens to be the way things are. We just have to live with it. Anyway, I'll press Enter, and that'll work out that uh, Sally Smithers has passed. I will think I'll just center that to look a bit better, and I can copy that down as we did in the very first tutorial, and it'll work out who has passed and who has failed. And of course, if Sally Smithers had a mark of, say, I don't know, 12, we would just prove this works, it would change from pass to fail, but do not worry, we'll put it back again, so she's still going to have a pass. Okay, in that last example, we used the if function to distinguish between two text labels, pass or fail. But I just want to make it clear you can use the if statement to actually calculate things as well. So here I've set up a slightly different example. We've got some people again, some of the same people I think, who are now sales reps. And in a particular period of time, say a week or a month or something, they've sold this much stuff for the company they work for, and we're going to work out if they get a bonus. And we're going to do that based on some criteria we'll enter over here. So we'll put in a bonus threshold, which is going to be £10,000. We'll enter 10000 there, and we'll format it as currency from the toolbar. And I think it's got too many decimals. We'll get rid of the decimals there and it'll fit in. We've got £10,000 in that cell. And the bonus percentage, as in the amount of money they're going to get as a bonus, is going to be 1% of what they've earned if they've earned more than 10000 So I'm going to put in 0 0.01, which represents 1% as a multiple in there. And then I'm going to format that as percentage, again going from the toolbar. So there we've got things set up. But again, I think I'll get rid of our decimals from the toolbar, make it look a bit neater. Right, let's write an if statement. Over here we're going to say equal if again and open a bracket. We're going to look at what's in cell C6, which is what they've earned. And we're going to say if C6 is greater than or equal to, if you're wondering how you do greater than or equal to in the spreadsheet, you put the greater than symbol and the equals together. And then we're going to look at the actual threshold figure, which is G6. And that's going to have to be a fixed cell reference. So I've clicked on G6 and I'm going to press Shift F4, or just F4 if you were in Excel, and it'll put the dollar signs in. So if C6 is greater than or equal to G6 as an absolute cell address, think back to our last tutorial, I'll then go semicolon, put in my condition. If it's greater than that, we would have the figure there, C6 itself, multiplied by the percentage, which is down here, that's sitting in G7, and G7 has got to be, again, a fixed cell address. And we would then have, if that's not the case, false condition now, semicolon goes in, 
and otherwise it would be zero and enter and there we are. So in this case, Sally's earned more than £10,000, she's getting that bonus, that should be 1% of that, which it looks like it is. If we just drag that down, you will see that works. Some people here, if they've earned more than £10,000, have got a bonus, some people haven't. But there we've got the if statement doing quite a bit of work. If we actually changed the criteria here, we could alter who got a bonus, who didn't. If you had to earn more than, say, £15,000, we could change that figure. That would change who got a bonus. Uh, if we change the bonus percentage, maybe that was um, 0.02 in there, then again, the bonus would change. So there, we're using an if statement to do something quite powerful. Right, the next thing I want to show you is how you do a more complicated if statement, what's called a nested if statement. And to do that, I've gone back to our example of people having taken a test. I'm going to get rid of what we've done previously, and I'm going to change the criteria, because in many exams, it isn't just a fail-pass situation. So I'm going to say, well, below 40 will stick to fail. 40 uh, to 69 will give them a pass, and then 70 or more, if I can type, uh, we will give them a merit. So there we are, we've now got three conditions. How do we do that in an if statement? Well, we do it like this. So we'll go to D6 again, and we'll say equal if, because that's how we start all these off, and we open up our condition, we look at cell C6. We'll say that if C6 is less than 40, then we're gonna have still a fail. But then for our next condition, we'll have another if statement. So we'll now go for our false condition. If we don't need an equals because we've already started off a formula, we can then go, go back to the cell, which is C6. If C6 is less than 70, colon, it's then going to be a pass. It must also be greater than 40 because it's failed the first if statement. And then after that, we will have then our merit. There we are. Close one bracket there, close two brackets, press enter, and we have our criteria. We just copy that down. You'll see that it works. And we can see there that we have two people with merits, one person with a fail, two people with fail, sorry, and, and, and three passes. Now here, I happen to have linked things we just look back into that cell directly to text labels. We could, of course, have done that a little bit neater. We could have actually linked things through to actual cell references. So we could have taken fail there from G6. I could have gone like that and put the dollar sign in. I could have gone to pass and rather than that done, pass from there and again put dollar signs in. And for merit, we could have gone to there and picked up that and again put dollar sign in and put that in. That's just a neater solution, drag it down, we've got that down there. The benefit of that, of course, is if we change, say, what you um, give these people, we can maybe that make that a bit wider and say, I don't know, that could be gold star, stick that in there, and this would obviously give us gold star over here. So it's always a good idea in this spreadsheet, if you can, to make as much as possible a variable you can refer back to. But the basic principle here, the multiple if, is that we've got an if statement which gives you three possible outcomes from having two nested ifs. The first if here says less than 40, we'll do that thing. If that's not true, the second says if it's less than something else, do something else, and then we have the one on the end. So that's a more powerful use of the if statement. Right, here we are again. In this final example, I want to show you what you would do if you need to use and or or statements inside an if statement. This is getting quite tricky. So here we've got a situation where same people have taken some tests, but they've taken two separate tests. And the criteria I've written down we've got to fulfill is people have got to pass both components to actually pass the actual overall, whatever it is they happen to be doing. Maybe it's something to do with their careers as, as sales reps. Anyway, if they get less than 40 in either component, they've got to fail, otherwise they pass. So how do we do that? Well, there's various ways we could do it. One way to do it is to use an and statement inside if. So we could go equal if, we've been doing that a lot here, haven't we? And then we'll put an and. And inside the and, we're gonna put 
C6, which is our first mark, has got to be greater than or equal to 40. They've got to pass that bit. And then our semicolon, and then C D6 has got to be greater than or equal to 40. If both of those conditions are met, close of our AND statement, we then go semicolon and go pass. I won't bother picking up labels here. And then we'll go fail, close things off, and enter. That should work it out. Again, we'll drag it down, and you will see we have pass or fail, etc. This person's passed them all, that person's got fail there, fail there, etc. It's worked it out. There are, of course, many ways to do anything in life. There's always more than one way to cook a cat, as they used to say. So if we get rid of that, another way we could have done this would be to use an OR statement. We could have gone equal if and looked at um, OR. And inside the OR we could have gone something like, say, C6 is uh, less than 40. And then D6 is less than 40. So if either of those is less than 40, we will say then fail, otherwise pass, and enter that. And it should give us, I would hope, exactly the same result. But what we've done there is to show you the use of putting an AND or an OR statement inside an IF statement. Once you've got to grips with the IF statement and other logic functions, you're all set to use spreadsheets for all kinds of very practical and useful and even exciting purposes. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.